Hi everyone, welcome to the Ravid Show. We are here at Graph Summit in London by Neo4j. Super excited to be with Ivan. Ivan, it's your debut. Super excited to chat with you. Great, thank you. I'm excited too. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Uh, Ivan, just for audience, would you like to tell us a little bit about what you do at Neo4j? And I know we'll be talking a lot around Infinity Graph, which I'm super excited about. But let's start with a quick intro. Sure. Uh, so I'm a VP of uh, product management uh, yep. at Neo4j. I look after the core uh, of the product, which is the database, uh, the graph database. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that's what I do. And it's been seven years now that I'm seven years. on that. Yeah. Fantastic, and we've been seeing all the great work that you all have been doing uh, with the product as well, and great announcements today too. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the recent announcement that you all made around the Infinity Graph. Uh, I'm kind of first uh, wanting to know what is Infinity Graph, who needs it now, if you can share that with our audience, and then we can dig more deeper into it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Infinity Graph is a new architecture that we have developed from the ground up with uh, uh, the really the core of the database in mind, and uh, it basically allows users to build uh, uh, bigger graphs. Yep. So way, way bigger than what we used to have with a single instance, with a single machine that we use. Okay, just a follow-up question around that. Uh, in simple words, how does property sharding work? If you can share a little bit more about that as well. Sure, absolutely, yeah. Uh, this is really, a an architecture that is different from uh, maybe other uh, database vendors have selected. Yep. We basically want to maintain uh, the topology of the graph, so the whole structure of the graph all together, but at the same time, uh, we want to uh, create uh, what we call shard in uh, our you know, terminology. Yep. So we want to create a partition of this data into multiple servers. So basically we split and distribute the data only where really that is less, let's say, relevant for graphs. So we have this like a dual uh, architecture which yep. is really, really powerful. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, when we talk about power, th uh, there's you know one thing that kind of also strikes uh, is the speed and also the ops. Um, First of all, let's uh, talk about can it handle ops and analytics together without slowing down? Uh, yeah. If yes, how? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the power of this new architecture is the fact that you can really handle both uh, analytical and operational uh, uh, workloads. Yep. You can use both. We have like uh, absolutely guaranteed uh, consistency and ACID compliance, what mm -hmm. we of course take really, really good care in terms of operational databases. Uh, and uh, also analytical power because of a performance that we can achieve uh, by using more distributed uh, uh, servers that can, of course, execute queries in parallel at the same time. Nice. Oh, great example there and fantastic insights. So, Ivan, uh, for the developers and for you know the enterprise leaders as well are there, what will be the migration path for current Neo4j users? Um, if you can share that, I'm yeah. pretty sure a lot of uh, folks out there are kind of also thinking about the migration. Absolutely, yeah. So bear in mind, first of all, this is the very first version. We are in V1, so of course uh, we are talking about something that we will even improve, but already you can literally take just uh, one the database, an existing database, or loading a massive amount of data, and you can automatically distribute through a tool that is like the tool that everybody loves at Neo4j. We call it Neo4j Admin. So it's really, really super simple. In the future, we will do this uh, uh, online. So we will have like uh, this uh, reorganization and rebalancing of the, all the systems from uh, one single uh, uh, database nice. to multiple databases uh, uh, automatic when the system is already running. I love it. Uh, this is fantastic and that's actually a good news for you know the users as well because it's seamless migration that they can you know uh, see in uh, faster as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so awesome. Um, quick example because I've uh, kind of wanting to know about this because I've seen this article and uh, wanting to see at, at you know, 100 TB and up, uh, where does it shine in, what are the limits when we talk about Infinigra? Right, so uh, the 100 terabytes is 
let's be clear. It's a it's a just a number we have identified, but it could be way more. Way more. Okay. Uh, or in some cases, maybe a little bit less, depending on the structure of the graph. Okay. Uh, so if you have like lots of vectors and uh, full text and large, uh, really large strings and large text that you want, or even images, etc., that you want to store into the database, you may have way more than 100 terabytes. Uh, if you have uh, only like really small properties, which mm -hmm. is like the old uh, way of uh, managing graphs, maybe that is uh, in the order of 100 terabytes. So y there are not really specific limitations uh, beyond that. Okay, that's uh, great. In uh, now I get it. Uh, why 100 dB? It's just an example that you all wanted to. It's, put it's it an out example. There. We yep. want to just say, hey. It's not unlimited. Uh, unlimited. Don't don't expect that uh, you know <laughs> it's it's infinite. But even if we call it infinite graph, but it is really really long. That's Absolutely. awesome. Any uh, use case that comes to your mind that you can share with our audience as well? Yeah, I can share the fact that uh, we have a really uh, an exciting uh, early adoption program where we have. Uh, the vast majority of the requests comes from uh, mostly financial organizations uh, running fraud detection because uh, they have really this dual uh, kind of workloads. They want like uh, transactional uh, uh, operations coming in, so lots of transactions coming in in real time, and at the same time, they want to uh, analyze uh, uh, again in real time uh, everything that is happening inside the database. So uh, that's that's the most of the yep. uh, use cases we have. Fantastic. Uh, just talk, wanting to learn a little bit more about the future. What's happening uh, next uh, when it when we're talking about Agent AI? We've been also seeing a lot of announcements today. Uh, can you share a little bit about that? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I can share it uh, with uh, you know the connection with Infinigraph. For Infinigraph sure. is absolutely necessary to power uh, what uh, all the agentic operations are. Coming and actually, it's already fully integrated. So, from uh, you know, from day one, Infinigraph has been designed to be 100% compatible with everything else we have, including, of course, the agentic operations we have. Okay, that's fantastic. Uh, thanks for sharing that. Uh, one last question for you, Ivan. For folks who wish to learn more about Infinigraph, if they want to try out. Uh, which is the best place to do that? And if they want to reach out to you, where can they connect with you? X, LinkedIn, which is the best platform? Yeah, absolutely, LinkedIn. Uh, uh, and uh, also we have, of course, uh, uh, we are all connected, especially at Neo4j, so you can reach out through uh, uh, all our colleagues at Neo4j. Our, nice. We call us nodes, of course. <laughs> uh, Obviously, the human yeah, connection absolutely. with the nodes, right? Yeah, and uh, you will be able to try and, uh, and use uh, Infinigraph. Uh, as a preview, uh, starting October. Okay, uh, so that's it's fantastic. now um, we will uh, we will release uh, officially in uh, uh, the software uh, in uh, in a couple of weeks. At the moment, is uh, in EAP. But if you want to try it even earlier than that, we are we are here and we we can definitely always happy to help. Yeah, uh, that's what I know about Neo4j leaders and the community and obviously the folks at here at Neo4j. Such a pleasure chatting with you, Ivan. Uh, you, you shared some amazing insights, and now I get more clarity around Infinigraph. Congrats on the announcements. You all have been making strides, uh, and people are loving that. So uh, the excitement is huge. Have fun at uh, the Graph Summit here in London. But such a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you. It was a real you. pleasure for me, too. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today.